So you're going to want to put on a pretty liberal amount of glue because we don't want this thing to leak. So I goop it on there pretty good all the way around. And my trick is I do both pieces. That way you just if there's any missed part in there, the little extra glue will get it. So with both these ends with glues on it, what I do is I put it in and I twist as I put it together. Make sure I get a nice seal in there. Same little thing with this little piece here. A nice liberal mount on there. And we're going to stick this in here and we're going to twist and seat it all the way down. That's good enough. With our piece of uh, PVC pipe, same thing. Nice liberal coating on there. Throw a little bit on, on the inside here as well in case we have any little gaps. We don't want to have this thing leak at all. Do a nice little twist on this one all the way down. Last, I'm going to put the cap on. Put a nice coating in there. And throw a little bit around the outside here. Make sure we don't have any leaks. This is really important because this is the chamber that holds the air until you fire it. So you do not want this part to leak. So this one we're going to twist on all the way down. You'll see when you pinch it, you get a, a nice goo ring around here. This is good. You want that. It looks a little sloppy, but you know it's not going to leak and you can always trim this off with a razor blade later. So there you have it, our finished air chamber. So now what we need to do is we need to drill two holes, one for the pressure valve and one for the, the air filler valve. So we'll go back over to our drill press here. I'm going to clamp this thing down. I like to use a pipe clamp so it doesn't jump around and get a nice smooth drill. It's really important that this thing is drilled smoothly so it doesn't leak. Get it locked into where you want to drill it. And just take your time and drill a nice, slow, smooth hole. flip it around, try and line it up as best I can, lock it down, and drill my second hole. Alright, there you have it. We got our two holes drilled, one for our pressure valve and the other one for our Schrader valve. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our valves together. It should have a little white box with a pressure gauge in it. This one you can screw in by hand. Get it started. It should go right in there. It'll thread in by itself. When it gets too tight, grab your 9 16 open end wrench here. So it's straight. Next we're going to take our Schrader valve. And we're going to put that in. We start that one by hand. Grab our 7 sixteenths. And we'll go ahead and tighten this one. And it'll thread itself in as well. And once we have that one down, don't over tighten it. We don't want the strip. There's our finished air chamber. We're all set to go. I like to let this dry, sit overnight before I shoot it. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the air valve on. So what I do is I take my first closed nipple 
I'll screw it in here. Now these parts I don't glue. That way you can replace your valve if it ever blows out. And you'll notice on the valve that it's got a 45 degree angle on the housing. This 45 faces forward. This is the airflow. And if you ever forget, it's real easy because at the bottom you've got a set of arrows that show you the direction of the flow. So, since the air is in here, we want the air to come out and flow out the barrel. We're going to put this together facing forward. We just screw this on until it gets nice and snug. Put another one in the front for our barrel. Now that's ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is put our barrel together. Same thing with the barrel. We're going to glue this part. Put a little bit of this in there. A little bit on this piece that goes into it. Let those set up for a second. Go ahead and add our glue. You don't have to be real liberal with this glue, just a little bit to hold it together because once the air passes through this, it's all already on its way out. This really doesn't have to hold any air. So I just twist it in there nice and neat. Gives us a nice seal. You can add different barrels with this. Once you have this basic bazooka style cannon, you can add other barrels to it. You could add the golf ball barrel, um, the potato cannon barrel. They're interchangeable, which is pretty nice. That's why I don't glue this to this piece. So let's screw that on. Now the final thing we need to do is add this to the barrel. So again, I'm going to put a little primer on here, put it on the inside, let that dry, add it to the outside of the barrel, just on one end. We're going to let that dry. Add a little bit of glue. And again, on this part, it doesn't take a whole lot. You just want just enough to stick it together because this part doesn't really hold any air. So we're going to twist this one in here. And there you have it. So this part just screws into the receiver. And last but not least, we'll put our trigger assembly on here. Make sure it faces forward. I'm going to twist this around so we can see what's going on with it. I usually have mine like on a 45 degree angle so I can see what's going on. And there's your finished potato cannon. Now the very last thing you can do with this that I like to do, it makes it really easy for doing the potato stuff because you're just going to take a potato stick it over the edge of the barrel and stick it down in there and it makes a perfect wad. You just stuff it down there with a broomstick. What you could do to make it easy is you could take it over if you have a grinder and you can grind the edge which will give it a 45 degree angle almost like a knife edge or you could just use a regular file and you can file the edge so you have a nice sharp edge and that helps you cut perfect potato wedges. So this is Mick from American Air Cannons saying thanks for watching and happy shooting.